friends, and welcome to The World Transform. This program is your guide to an astounding future that lies ahead, one that will be here sooner than you think, and one that you have an important role to play in bringing about. We're not here so much to talk to you about the future as we are to ask you to think about your future and to consider what may be the biggest transformation of them all, the one that occurs in your world. The one that begins with considering and acting on the almost unlimited transformations that lie ahead and ends somewhere beyond the reach of the human imagination. So, when does that amazing future begin? Well, today is the day. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-blogger, co-futurist, and co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I'm super fantastic. How are you, my friend? Doing great. Doing good. All right. Well, this is our second video show, second half-hour show. How are you feeling about the format? Pretty, uh, pretty okay with it? Yeah, I think uh, I, we're going to probably uh, continue to kind of tweak this just a little bit, but uh, I'm I'm very much enjoying. It. I think this is uh, this is going to be. Uh, uh, something that uh, we're going to enjoy doing. So, I think yeah. so too. I'm, I'm, I'm ha having fun with it. We are learning new things and learning right. learning how to have new problems. But uh, that's uh, uh, that, that's it. that's always been the fun of doing this. Anyhow, is uh, getting to learn and grow as we go. So on Friday, we did a program where we talked about uh, broadly speaking what the kinds of transformations that will be occurring in the world are and and what sorts of strategies we might have around them. And today we're going to get uh, a little more deep into what those types of transformations are. We've, we've laid out some scenarios for the future that I thought it would be beneficial for us to just kind of go through those. So we're, we're gonna talk about those. These will sound familiar, I think, to a lot of our listeners. These are going to sound like ideas that we've talked about before, but we're gonna be talking about them in slightly different terms than we've, than we've talked about them before. I hope that makes sense. It's the same ideas, but uh, packaged a little bit differently, kind of like the show itself, I guess. Uh, we, it's a, lot, a lot of the same stuff. But maybe with some uh, uh, with some new thought put around it. So uh, with that in mind, we'll start with the one that we spent some time on uh, on Friday, which was in the future everything will be a coffee shop. That that is uh, the scenario I think, Stephen, that you have really made your own by uh, by writing about. And we probably don't want to spend too much time on that one uh, again today, just because we we hit it so hard on Friday. But just very very briefly, remind us what that one is. Okay, it's, a, it's uh, the idea that uh, in, the, in the future we're going to see traditional infrastructure kind of dis be dismantled. Uh, we're talking uh, offices, uh, we're talking ed you know, educational institutions, and uh, every, every place uh, that people gather uh, becoming, in a way, a coffee shop, a, a kind of an ag ad hoc place of doing business, a uh, place of, doing, you know, uh, of shopping, of socialization, uh, of education. Um, and uh, that's and, and, and it, you know maybe some places are are more suited uh, for one one of those things over the other, but there's a mixture in uh, every place that you go of uh, all three of those things. And so uh, that's that's the idea of coffee shopification of the future. And um, I, I think we're beginning to see some uh, some uh, the beginnings of some of this now. Yeah, it's, it's occurring now. It's this, this interesting idea of people di divorcing themselves from or just freeing themselves from that infrastructure that existed in the past, mainly because they don't need it. Um, when, when they need to get together or when they need to perform some task, they find themselves more often than not in a multi-purpose kind of facility rather than in, in a dedicated facility. And very often it's a it's a Starbucks, right? I mean, very often it's a, you know, something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, can... And, and, uh, I, you know, although I didn't step foot in a coffee shop uh, to do it, um, I want to just tell you, I, I want to admit to something. I did not, I literally did not go into a store in preparation for Christmas this year. Not, not a, go. not the first store. I, I, I did everything through Amazon and other uh, related outlets like that. I did a little bit of eBay. Uh, in preparation for Christmas, I did not go into a physical store at all. Just you know, and I and my shopping pattern had grown more and more like that. But this is the the very first year that I've not uh, I've not done any shopping in a store, and uh, no one seemed to complain. <laughs> no one had a problem. <laughs> it all worked out okay. Yeah. It all worked out just fine. Well, so uh, and I, I didn't miss it. Uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, some people. Uh, uh, would miss the experience of, uh, of of going into a store and, and a physical store and shopping off the sh you know taking things off the shelf and checking out and all that. But uh, I, I did not miss it. And uh, uh, anyway, for, for those who miss it, for those who want that experience, there's still stores around. Um, yeah. You know, and and, and I think there. Yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to 
take the business away from your local mom and pop. Well, well, I'm just going to say, and there's still organizations, obviously lots of organizations where there's still offices and people still go to campuses for school. I mean, it, yeah. that, that all still exists, but it's changing. It's changing. And what you just, the example you just gave is, is uh, you know, the kind of change that, that we're actually seeing happen. That's, that's why it's a, you know, it's a transformation. In the future, everything will be a coffee shop. Well, everything won't be a coffee shop, but we're going to be doing a lot more without the infrastructure that we used to have than uh, than we used to and that's a that's a fantastic example actually i actually went into a few stores i have to uh, i have to admit not 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 many though uh yeah, yeah. I, I don't i don't go to stores ever if i don't if i don't have you to. can help it huh? yeah i mean you know christmas <laughs> yeah. or otherwise i just yeah anything i can get off amazon i pretty much uh, i pretty much do okay so that's one that's a transformation yeah. we're seeing we're seeing the uh the emergence of a new approach to infrastructure and really uh, moving away from the idea of dedicated infrastructure for an awful lot of uh, a, lo a lot of things that used to have dedicated infrastructure. Well, here, here's another transformation, and I've called this one, I just love my new toaster. And the idea here is that we're going to see a fundamental transformation, uh, as we have in the past anyway, uh, between human beings and technology. The relationship between human beings and machines is changing rapidly um, it's evolving rapidly and we're going to see it uh, we're going to see it continue to happen we're going to see that speed up um, as as this technology gets more and more embedded in our lives and in fact uh, to talk about that as a future prediction rather than as something that we're you know that we're obviously well into i think is 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 a little bit uh, uh What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of begging the question a bit. It's, uh, it's a little bit passe almost because yeah. we're, we are we are in the middle of this. Uh, yeah. We we, t we talk to our phones now. If I'm driving down the road, I'm I'm not going to flip out my cell phone and and hunt for a number or something. I will tell my phone who I want it to call. Um, you know, so, and that's <laughs> which is safer for everyone. Right. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I mean, we 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 speak to our technology now and more and more, and uh, that's. So we're at the very beginning of it, though. Well, and as, as you've said in the past, um, that you consider Google to be a part of your brain, right? That, uh, that, that that you claim the information you get off Google is part of your own mindset, you know, your own mind space, because you have the access to the to the technology that will that will allow you to get that information. There's so many um, of those kinds of small changes that have occurred that really add up. Uh, pretty pretty rapidly and of course the, the the changing relationship between technology is very much related to the change around infrastructure and we'll see a lot of uh, tie-ins between um, a, a lot of these as we go uh, but um, I chose that name I just love my new to my new toaster there's a little toaster pun there from Battlestar Galactica for those who are uh, th those who are familiar but people do have always gotten really fond of uh, have always been very attached to any uh, it can become very attached to any physical object, any any piece of property. Uh, but people get oddly attached to bits of technology. They get oddly attached to uh, ways of doing things. And as that experience becomes more personal, you're talking about the fact that we now talk to our phones, um, that that we that we interact with our uh, with our technology in a way that wasn't possible before. Um, th that whole question of loving one's toaster is is going to become a a much more pressing question, I would say. <laughs> uh, when, when when your toaster can wear that red dress from uh, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> that, then, well, uh, yeah, it, it, it will become an issue. I think um, there is a movie that has uh, just hit the theaters this last Friday. Phil, uh, uh, Spike Jones is, and it, does he pronounce his last name Jones? Like, uh, as far as I know, it looks like Jones okay. to me. Yeah, yeah, Spike Jones's uh, movie Her, and uh, we ought we ought to have a. We ought to have a discussion about that on a later show. Uh, we really should. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we're, we're, we're working our way through these uh, scenarios for trans transformation tonight. Um, let's think about uh, Wednesday and Friday. We're going to spend some time talking about uh, two of these transformations in particular, and I won't be coy here. Obviously, one of them is going to be, I just love my new toaster. Why don't, we, why don't we spend time Wednesday talking about, I just love my new toaster, and I bet that movie comes up, or we'll spend a good deal of time talking about that movie. And yep. uh, I'll tell you what the other two th th that uh, touch upon it when, when we get to them. Um, okay. Sounds good. Uh, but absolutely, that, that's, a, that's a movie about a man who has a personal relationship with a, his computer. And uh, w without getting into the whole discussion about it, I will say this is a big step up 
from and a much more serious treatment of the subject than we've seen in the past. Because when this has been addressed in the past, it was a great episode of uh, Big Bang Theory where Raj falls in love with uh, Siri, right? I mean, yeah. uh, and it was funny. It was and... played for laughs. This uh, was deadly serious, almost to the point of being too serious about it. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a great serious treatment of it, don't you think? Yeah, it is, and and quite funny in places as well. Yeah, so it can yeah, can uh, be. So I, we do recommend the movie. Uh, watch it before you uh, listen to the program. On Wednesday. If you're worried about spoilers, you better better go better see it before, it. You, before you listen to us because we're uh, we spoil movies there. That's just well, it's, it's kind of our policy, uh, pretty yeah. much. Usually old movies. We spoil a lot of old movies, but we don't mind spoiling a new one. Um, it won't be our intent. Yeah. But we're going to talk about it. It's so. just part, yeah, it's part of the discussion. We, we'll have to. Okay, what's the uh, next one? All right, the next one is called All You Can Eat. And this is about the coming ability to produce any material goods we, that we might want or need. We, we've talked about this uh, many times in the past. This has been one of the core transformations that we've always talked about on the World Transform. But basically what I've done here is I've just kind of summed it up. Um, All You Can Eat is a silly name, but... But, but summed up the idea of the coming ability to produce anything. That, that's, right. really, that's really what we're talking about because uh, we've talked about nanotechnology or uh, recently I've written a little bit about Eric Drexler's new book, uh, Super, excuse me, not Super Abundance, what's it called? Radical Abundance, uh, wherein he refers to that technology as uh, atomically precise manufacturing. Uh, we, we've talked about 3D printers and we've talked about a lot, a lot of these contributing technologies. Well, I, I'm taking that transformation um, as a uh, summation of all those technologies working together, whatever they are, what, whatever they might be, uh, nanotech, biotech, um, 3D printing, uh, what uh, information technology as it becomes uh, closer aligned with, with making those kinds of things happen. But when all those combine and we end up in a, in a scenario where essentially um, any, oh, and deindustrialization, de that's the other one which is related to coffee shopification. As the infrastructure required to do things goes down, the ability of people to do things goes uh, increases, and one of the things we wanna do is make our own stuff. We wanna produce our own food, we wanna produce our own goods. Uh, all you those know, converge together into this uh, this new capability. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. A part, a part of all you can eat that we don't mention often is um, uh, print-on-demand books. Right. Uh, I, I, I foresee, uh, you know, businesses like Barnes and Noble, if they survive at all, they will survive really as their co as the coffee shop that they now have within the uh, within the facility and then a print on demand uh, uh, book, uh, you know, printer where, you know, any, any book um, uh, that you want uh, can be printed within a few minutes. And uh, we might have we might have bestsellers, uh, you know, the recently released bestsellers. Uh, we have a. We have a rack of those pre-printed, so you can grab that on, you know, on the fly. But everything right. else, you'll have to wait five minutes for. Uh, and there's no out-of-print books anymore. You know, if you know, right. if there's something from 1930 that obscure that you're interested in reading, uh, we'll we'll have it ready for you in five minutes. But, uh, but why yeah. would you want a printed book? Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. I, yeah. You know, if you got uh, some people do. Uh, yeah. You 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 were a little uh, reluctant, Phil, to take the jump, but now that you have. And uh, you you love your Kindle, I believe. Yeah, I don't know why so, you're going on about printing books. I'm mean, what? Yeah, printing yeah, well, books. print. Oh, that's yeah. that's old school. Well, in, for some people, uh, they just they're going to want that, and uh, um, you know, so. And they'll be able to have it. That's the point. If you want no, printed that, books, that, it's going to be a fairly easy. I mean, that's a, you know, that's that's a problem we've been solving for a while, and yeah. uh, we're we're, we're going to be uh, we're going to be quite a bit better at it. Um, it gets more interesting when you start thinking about uh, uh, things like producing an automobile or producing housing. But these are all things that are th that are on the roadmap. In the uh, piece I wrote recently for the Freeman, I talk about a chapter in Drexler's book where he describes the the, the basic manufacturing process in in a space about the size of a garage that would produce a car, and it does it in a matter of minutes. Now, there there's this objection to to whether there's anything in particular happening there because people say, well, so what? A modern assembly line produces a car in a matter of a few minutes. What's the difference? What's the big deal? And the difference is, the big deal is that a modern assembly line produces that car from parts that were already made someplace else that have been shipped from materials that were uh, made elsewhere that, that actually, if you take the few minutes that it took that car and wound it all the way back to the source materials and to the source materials for those and to the parts that made those parts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way back, 
It took years to make that car. But truly right. now, today, you'll be talking about, you flip the switch, if you've got the feedstock in there, and it's going to be materials that you need to make it, uh, not necessarily metal. People get hung up on, oh, well, you got to have rare earths, you got to have metal, uh, you got to have all these things to make a car. Not necessarily. One, one of the interesting things about uh, atomically precise manufacturing is that things can be substituted. You can do things differently. Uh, you can use coal and, and make uh, carbon composites to make a vehicle out of it. In fact, we'll probably all be driving carbon composite vehicles uh, in the in the near future, those of us who aren't already. Um, so, in fact, um, using silicon, using oxygen, using things that are abundantly available, um, we're going to be able to make a lot of things that we currently make out of other stuff because it's relatively cheap and relatively abundant, and we're tied to this process of this this very long supply chain of uh, of, of getting us to where we're going. That's going to go away uh, or change into something else, change into something really interesting and new. Uh, and, and we're going to be very much empowered, and the world is going to be very different when it comes to talking about owning physical stuff. That's just going to be a, that, that's going to be a very different world, isn't it? Absolutely. And of course, the worry is that uh, yeah, we'll all be able to have anything we want, but we won't have any jobs because you know uh, all the thousands of people that were involved in uh, in the making of a car uh, no longer are needed in that process that you're describing. When when Jay Leno can be uh, in his in his uh, in his uh, garage and uh, can you know uh, make a car from scratch, um, you know that's uh, that's a different world, um, right. you know. And uh, and maybe it, it might be Jay at first, but uh, then pretty soon it's uh, it's Stephen and Phil uh, exactly. being able to make their own cars. So um, it's uh, it, it, so that's. Uh, it, it'll be a different world and, and for a lot of reasons, and uh, you know the job aspect is uh, is another is another concern. It's okay, a, it's a huge piece of it. Next, let's yeah. talk about. Uh, I, I call this one. Let's slip into something more comfortable, and this is one that obviously we could spend whole hours talking about, but it's just the fundamental ability to modify ourselves, the ability to modify uh, the human person, modify uh, modify our our genome modify our how we look, um, how we feel, how we think. And um, uh, Stephen, I actually think you had a good recent example of, uh, of this. Yeah, just this week, uh, there was a story that came out in Discovery Magazine about uh, the drug Valproic, and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Sounds Valproic, right. yeah, I think it's Valproic acid. Okay. Uh, it is a uh, it is a drug that is uh, prescribed for mood stabilization, but uh, they've learned that uh, those who are taking it obt obtain perfect musical pitch. Now, th let me tell you how rare that is. Perfect musical pitch is uh, something that is, uh, you know, one in 10,000 of us have. Right. And, um, you know, uh, I wish I were one of them. Uh, I can appreciate uh, music when it's uh, on pitch, but it's not, and I don't have perfect pitch. Um, the drug can be used in other ways, too. And here, here's one of the things. Perfect, perfect musical pitch is something that's it's not just a physical gift in, of the ear, but it's also a gift in the mind, and it's something that has to be learned at a very early age because if you don't learn it at a very early age, then your ability to pick it up, even if you have a good ear, um, once you've reached a certain age, is gone. Well, this, this drug allows you to pick it up as an adult, but it also allows you to pick up foreign language much more easily as an adult. Wow. It basically it restores the plasticity <laughs> that's not hard, and that's not easy to say. It, uh, it would make that. it easier for you to say that word, for example. Yeah, I could yeah. I could learn to say yeah. that word much more easily. Yes, and uh, it restores that in a in a uh, brain that is uh, has become crystallized in a way. As we get older, that's that's uh, one of the joys of getting older is that it's harder to learn new things, but you're really really good at the stuff you've done for years. Right. So, right. anyway, um, but this this uh, this drug tends to change that. This is exciting. Uh, you know, there's some exciting possibilities there. Absolutely. Well, that's, I mean, that's huge. You, you think about uh, these, these scenarios where in the future we can uh, take a pill and learn a language or, uh, you know, you know some, some of those really amazing uh, uh, scenarios that you see in science fiction. This is a step in that direction, right? It's suddenly uh, a drug that, that, that can give you perfect pitch, right? A drug that yeah. makes it easier yeah. to learn a language. We're, yeah. we're, we're heading in that direction. And it's one of tens of thousands of kinds of modifications uh, to our to ourselves that people are going to be engaging in and uh, fundamentally changing what it means to be human. It's it's going to be 
an interesting and puzzling time, and a really exciting time because people are going to be able to do things that they've always wanted to do. Uh, people are going to be able to do things that they never even thought about doing. Um, and uh, people are going to, other people are going to do things that you never thought about anybody doing, and it's going to be scary, and it's uh, it's going to be off-putting, and uh, the the whole concept of the, the whole the whole question of what does it mean to be human is going to be called into question over and over again. We're going to constantly have to be uh, revisiting that that question. But that's an important question. It's one that's probably one we should spend a lot of time on. It's one that uh, that, that that probably deserves that kind of attention. But man, I'm looking forward to using that. Huh? I want to I want to pick up a language fast, and uh, I don't have to worry about perfect pitch. I'm, I'm, you, you've got that all right. I'm close enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I think I'm, uh, I'm right in there. Okay, now the next three are actually a cluster. Uh, these, these go together. They aren't exactly the same thing, and they aren't exactly a continuum, but they are closely related to each other. And the first of the three is the one that we're most nearly uh, into the beginning of now, which I call it uh, designer reality. And this is when uh, several of these ideas that, uh, that we've talked about in the past, um, augmented reality, uh, virtual reality um, and uh, various kinds of enhancements to reality uh, they all come together um, and we start really fundamentally changing the experience that we're having day to day uh, I was just reading about the um, oculus rift I believe it's called the uh, interface this is this is a virtual reality interface and the fear this reviewer has that people are going to go into VR withdrawal after they're uh, after they're not they're, they're not using it for a while. But uh, you know the idea that you can spend part of your day in the real world and then part of your day in a completely immersive, completely fake world, um, and and somehow bounce back and forth between those that's interesting in and of itself. But augmented reality gives you this somewhere in between uh, experience where. A hybrid reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then we, we we talked to the author of that book a while back. Uh, 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 although although they, the authors of that book were going in a slightly different direction, but that's that's exactly what uh, that's exactly what, what it is. It's um, somewhere between real reality and virtual reality. When you when, when you're augmenting it, when you start enhancing it, uh, and and putting your own layers on top of reality, what's really going on? Are you know are are, are we all still in the same world? Well, were we ever? Right is the uh, is, is is the response? Yeah, yeah is, is the question that will that, that we'll probably come back to. But it, it becomes a lot more pronounced when um, what we see, uh, what we feel, uh, what we experience moment to moment becomes so configurable, uh, yeah. and it it's, uh, it's, raises it's raises seven, real it, questions. Go ahead. It's like a seventh sense at that point, right? Because uh, you know, I mean, right now we, we carry around these little phones and, uh, the, you know, this, which is an entirely different experience, really. When I, when I first said that Google was part of my brain, it was meant sort of as a joke uh, because that was back when, you know, I, was, I wasn't even carrying a laptop around in those days. That was just desktop time, you know. Right. And, uh, uh, but now uh, it's, it's, it's much less of a joke now, isn't it, now that we, uh, we have uh, these smartphones with us everywhere we go. Imagine uh, when, when what we need uh, can be overlaid over our vision and uh, we have it immediately. You know, what, whatever the, uh, uh, you know, uh, sports score is, the, uh, you know, something we were watching, we were, you know, wanting to watch or, uh, you know, the weather, right. our stock quotes or any, anything. Now, I, I, let me take issue with you just a second. You said a, a second ago, real reality versus virtual reality. Um, I would I would suggest to you that what augmented reality is is it's still reality 100 percent it's just augmented I mean you know I, I, it sounds like I'm being silly or something or ironic or something but I'm not meaning to right. it's just a, it's additional reality you know I mean when you uh, when you're walking around in the world without uh, without these th things and you you know uh, uh, you're, you're getting reality, but you're getting less of it than you would uh, when you're plugged into augmented reality. So you're, you're actually more in the world, in a way, uh, plugged in uh, than uh, than uh, you are uh, without it. So um, it's, it's. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, 
aug augmented reality, if it conflicts with real reality at all, it filters some out, right? It, you're you're, you're yep. missing some for some other, but you're, you're, it, it's not really a conflict. Um, enhanced reality, which is, uh, I don't know if anyone uses this term other than myself, but we're going we're gonna to get into this. Um, Ray Kurzweil talks about it a bit in um, uh, The Singularity is Near. I think he talked about it more maybe in uh, The Age of Spiritual Machines, uh, where uh, yeah. three people could be at dinner and one of them is actually with someone else, is also there with them, but you know some, yeah. somebody else uh, can't see them. Or I'll give this example. Uh, do you remember the movie Shallow Hal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, so you've got Jack Black, and uh, he's he's in love with an obese woman, but when he looks at her, he sees, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow in her prime. Okay, uh, yeah. it, it's a uh, it's a little you know mind trick that's uh, that, that that has been played on him. Um, what if people start playing tricks like that on themselves, right? Um, which ultimately <laughs> technology will make it possible for us to do. You know, we we have these crude little masks and filters we can lay on top of video displays right now, but ultimately people might just choose a whole new avatar, a whole new icon for somebody who's actually in their life, you know, in the augmented reality that they might choose to uh, uh, choose to deploy for that person would give them a completely different look or a different voice, you know, if somebody's voice gets on your nerves or uh, whatever it might be. And at that point you really are um, diverging from quote unquote real reality, except yeah. to the extent that we all do this anyhow. We, we, we all see the world through these uh, subjective filters anyway. We, you know, we, we hear kind of what we want to hear. We see kind of what we want to see. But it, it will become much more explicit uh, when technology allows it. And I think, I think create some real issues around uh, the difference between what's real and what's not real. And I won't be quiet. That's the other one that, we're, that we'll get into. We'll talk about that on Friday, actually. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about the... Uh, uh, the, the movie Her and what's real and what's not real. It, it, it's going to be a question people are going to be asking a lot in uh, the not too distant future. But let me tell you about these other two very quickly. Uh, yeah. We're not going to spend too much time on them tonight. Uh, Fantasy Island is this is when we can create any subjective experience that we can imagine. So anything that you can think about, you can have that subjective experience. Not to say that you can literally make anything happen that you can think about, but you can have the experience of it. So between virtual reality and you know pumping chemicals into your system or actually doing things somehow you can you can actually experience name it you know flying under your own power or whatever crazy uh fantasy you might have steven and don't share i don't think we want to we, we don't want to know just <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a family show, exactly. And, and then finally the, the the ultimate one and i and i gave it the name the ultimate shortcut is when the difference between thinking about any achievable outcome and actually producing that outcome approaches zero. Um, this is a post-singularity, I don't know, this is post like three or four singularities, but when we're not just talking about having a subjective experience, when we're saying, I can think it and then it becomes real. Um, I don't know that we ever get to that point, but we get closer and closer to that point all the time. We're actually, uh, we're actually moving in the direction of that point and, and uh, that is another way of describing, I suppose, the uh, final state or the next big state. We talk a lot about the singularity. Um, this is another way of looking at it, the ultimate shortcut. And I want to think about what's happening in the world in those terms as we talk about these subjects over the next, the rest of the year, uh, because I think that, uh, that that transformation from, it's really hard to get from thinking about something to making it happen to, you can just think about it and it happens. Uh, that journey, is one that we're on and it's one that uh, I think uh, has very important implications for the future. Yeah, and I think we, we'll have an opportunity to talk about the ultimate shortcut in our in our discussion about the movie Her also. So I think we awesome. will. Absolutely. Yep. All right, well that's our topics and that, my friend, is our show. We'll be back uh, with uh, two more shows this week. As I said, on Wednesday we'll be talking about the movie Her and what it says about the relationships between humans and technology. On Friday, we'll talk about the movie Her and what it says to us about uh, what is real. So look forward to those conversations with you, Stephen. Uh, thanks very much, uh, everyone, for being with us. And until next time, live to see it.